So Necromantic <laughs> is a 1988 West oh. German horror exploitation film written and directed by, I don't know how to say his name, but I believe they were a band that just decided like, let's have a camera and just start filming weird shit. So mm. it's been banned in a number of countries and... <laughs> So you know right there, that's the Faces of Death vibe. Like if you see some of the original posters and you get the from the name, right? It's a guy romance and, you know, the whole necro thing. So they really got into that. So it's due to its transgressive subject matter, including, including necrophilia and audacious imagery. So audacious, audacious imagery to <laughs> say the least, because I'm, I, I don't want to describe the end to you. But this ending of this film <laughs> was the most disturbing film ending that I've ever seen in my film life. Did not, <laughs> did not see it coming. And it's, imagine like somebody says, hey, let's get ice cream. And all of a sudden you get hit in the face with a baseball bat. That's the only way to describe this. Because they gave you the warning and they like... They had the, everybody was in the chapel. Can you imagine these two mutants are forever going to be tied to this movie? It's just like, yeah, we got married on Joe Bob, which is a film that, you know, a show that showed a double feature of films. What were the films? Maybe we should watch that in our anniversary. <laughs> like, maybe not. Mm. <laughs> one of my favorite mm. tweets of <laughs> one of my favorite tweets of the night it says, if anybody walks in on you watching this movie, Change the channel to porn really quick. <laughs> but yeah, it's yep. like, so we got... Jeez, I'm going to have to watch to, it. Is it, up, is it up on Shudder? It's still not up on Shudder, but right. I can tell you the end has full frontal, full fluids. That's all I'm going to no. say. <laughs> full frontal mm -hmm. and full... Fr I don't think, hopefully, the AI is okay with that. Full frontal, <laughs> full fluids. That's how it ends. <laughs> But so you, I don't think you, neither one of you, you, you survived. You wouldn't have got the, uh... I just, I would have, I just could not stay up. I, it, it's, I don't know. Uh, I, it's like you said, the first movie is so entertaining. So good. Uh, you know, on that second break, um, it's just hard to stay up. I don't know, man. I, I'm going to go back and revisit. I'm kind of angry at myself for not staying up to watch this. <laughs> This I've is... seen my uh, friend Curly Girl at the movies review it, and she gave some pretty graphic clips and and scenes and scene descriptions. And I didn't realize it until after I was like reading the description on Wikipedia because I ran out of time before the stream. And I was like, oh yeah, I I'm imagining everything, and she gave me everything. It was a pretty good long video. I do want to watch it just because I I can say I watched it or at least try to watch it. I'm not sure if I'll if I will finish it, but um it's it's and i get it like reading it on wikipedia the plot i'm like this is stupid it's disgusting but it's really not stupid it is disgusting but it is a thing that can happen because it talks about the trauma of this boy who sees i guess his parent mutilate and kill this rabbit of his and it's super sad and you know, that is kind of the mentality of a lot of serial killers. Unfortunately, if you see right. a serial or if you see a person hurting an animal, it's more times than not going to be a serial killer later on in life, a child, if I didn't say that in the first place, or even a person, if you see a person, a grown person doing that, they're likely a person who would harm another human being. Um, Cause it's not that much different necessarily for them. Uh, and that's terrifying. And this movie is just displaying the life of somebody who actually exists among us. And there are plenty of them. And even though it's just so, in our minds, quote unquote, far fetched, it's also just so real because these folks actually exist. I know there's a rapper called um, Necro, I believe. And it's just weird that he decides to like name himself that because there are a couple of songs of his that I like. And I'm like, bro, I'm listening to a man who calls himself Necro and actually talks about, you know, having sex with dead bodies. But it's like, I'm not really into that part of it. But he is, you know, talking about a thing that is a thing. It's a disease. Obviously, it's a mental disorder it to, is. like, have that fetish. But it's it's a real thing. And it's and it's scary. And, um, and when, you, when you find a love, 
um, when you find somebody who has that weird passion, just like you do, and sometimes you don't even know that you guys have that and you're together for a while and then you discover this thing together, that's almost even more disturbing and, and creepy because it grows almost more rapidly between the two of y'all. And then who knows what y'all would do to to satiate that thirst. It's right. almost like being a cannibal, like with Bones and All, like Bones and All needed to have a little bit of the necromantic vibe in it without the necrophilia <laughs> you know like i wanted a little bit of, of of a mixture i guess with that as far as how far they were going to take those uh dark tones you know um so yeah i guess and just in hindsight like if if bones and all just took two percent of what necromantic had it might have been it would have raised better. the game <laughs> Well then, I, yeah. and I I do agree. If if you're if you're a film fan, just go in for the experience, not for the entertainment. Just so you can say you experienced it. I also recommend going back and watching the Joe Bob in betweens because everything you're saying, you're really echoing a lot of stuff he's saying. And then he got into a history of a necrophiliac in the UK, and he started telling the backstory of that, and then how many different bodies he had and he took selfies before mm. there was a phone and he went into the whole history of that and you know when joe bob shows it you have to respect it like everything you show he's respect is he's never putting something something up there for shock value he's putting something up there to give you an experience and then he's going to give you the backstory of why he's doing it in between those cuts are vital for a film like this. Yeah. You need those breaks. Okay. You need those breaks of him breaking down what's going on. I think that really, like if you just sat and watched this film straight up by yourself, <laughs> yeah. this is tough. And this is coming from somebody who watched faces of death when I was probably like 10 years old. <laughs> Cause uh, it's like, and then you find out that was a work, but again, it's tough. That was a tough one to go through, yeah. and tough in a sense. Of, I think for the animals, a lot of people had trouble. And then you get into the mental health question. It's just like, wait a minute. So you're gonna wince if a rabbit gets whacked or a cat gets whacked, but you're not gonna wince if a person gets whacked. So it really does exactly. say like, uh, correct, correct, right? Because yes. <laughs> again, and Dar right. <laughs> and Darcy gets into that too. And I thought that's always such a fascinating conversation to have like wait you're okay with that and then she was really passionate right she's a vegan so she really gets into it. it's like yeah now you're talking about innocence of something that didn't have a choice and didn't have a save yeah. so again I, I i recommend it with the disclaimer just like be, be ready well, for that ending. only watch necromantic with joe bob's commentary that's i think exactly, that that's i think exactly. that's solid booking because it adds to it to have someone that's walking you through it sort of like giving you the explainers between in between is uh, I think that's useful. I think that's what's great about that show, because Joe Bob is a gimmick, is his gimmick, but he's a serious film journalist. Yeah, that's what he did. That's that's what he did at first, and he created the Joe Bob gimmick to get himself over with right. the character, and it worked. And it worked. I mean, Joe Bob had a he wrote a, a crime novel that got turned into a Hulu series just like last year. Oh, that's right. That was based on his thing that he yeah. wrote. Yeah, I mean, you, you can tell his journalism. He writes all his own stuff. And when he's, it's impressive to watch him just like rattle through so effortlessly on what he needs to say and what he wants to do. So, if Rainbow, if you have Shudder, highly recommend it. I almost pressed play and I was just like, ah, I just had the time just because like I yeah. knew what it was at the, at the time. I was like, let me just wait until tomorrow. Oh, I'll wait till tomorrow. And then I just literally run out of time. But. Yeah. Um, with his commentary, with that note that you gave, I'm totally down to check it's a it out because I do want to watch it. Two screen experience because yeah. okay. I was watching, I had his commentary and we were communicating on Twitter with all the other people that were going through this experience together that really did yeah. help.